the 10th anniversary of the UN Security Council adopting Resolution 1441, giving Iraq a final opportunity to comply with disarming itself of its alleged weapons of mass destruction. Between 2002 and 2003, UN inspectors conducted over 900 inspections in Iraq. And they didn't find any traces of biological or chemical weapons or any evidence of a nuclear weapons program. Although Iraq complied with the inspections, the U.S. abandoned diplomacy and decided to invade the country on March 19, 2003. So why am I talking about Iraq? Well, because history repeats itself. And in the same way that the U.S. government led an unprovoked invasion of a sovereign oil-rich country in 2003, the wheels are in motion for a similar attack against the sovereign oil-rich state of Iran. The media and political establishment would like to have you believe that Iran is the biggest threat facing this country. But who is a threat to who? When in fact the U.S. has played a large and in many ways sinister role in shaping modern day Iran. For a lot of Americans, U.S.-Iran relations are highlighted by the 1979 hostage crisis, where 52 U.S. diplomats were held hostage by Iranian university students in Tehran for 442 days. But the truth is, the most important date to remember is 1953. This is the year the U.S. overthrew Iran's first democratically elected leader and installed the Shah, a pro-U.S. dictator. Why would the U.S. do this? I thought we were all about spreading democracy. Well, once you throw a little oil in the mix, democracy gets kicked to the curb. Prior to the coup, BP, or British Petroleum, controlled all of oil Iran's oil production. So when Iranian Prime Minister Mohammad Mossadi nationalized the oil industry, Britain took Iran to the world court. How dare a country try to manage, manage its own resources? Well, when Britain lost the claim, they turned to President Eisenhower, and under the pretense of Iran being a communist threat, they urged the U.S. to intervene. The newly formed CIA staged Operation Ajax, a coup to overthrow the democratically elected government of Iran. And after that, Iranian oil was once again flowing under the control of Britain, the U.S., the Netherlands, and France. Under harsh autocratic control, the Shah, backed by the U.S., ruled Iran for the next 25 years. And after decades of protests in 1979, two million people flooded a square in Tehran, starting a general strike which shut down the state's economy. The Shah had no choice but to step down at this point. And religious leader Ayatollah Khomeini, the Shah's biggest opponent who had been exiled for 14 years, returned to become leader by popular demand, thus beginning the Islamic Republic of Iran. Less than a year later, Saddam Hussein invaded Iran to gain access to Iran's oil and trade routes in the Gulf. The result was one of the longest and most tragic conventional wars of the 20th century. All the while, the U.S. was supporting Saddam with money, weapons, intelligence, even after learning that the Iraqi military was using chemical weapons against Iranians and its own citizens. Fast forward to today. Iran is completely isolated and being closed in by the U.S. military. Take a look at this map. The country is completely surrounded by U.S. bases. Its economy is in shambles because of crippling U.S. sanctions. And just over the last year, the U.S. has sponsored assassinations of Iranian nuclear scientists, engaged in cyber warfare against their infrastructure, sent drones to spy on the country. And these are just the things that we know about. So I'll ask again, just who is threatening who? I want you to picture this scenario. If Iran had staged a coup 50 years ago in the U.S. to install a pro-Iranian dictator, if Iran had unmatched military influence in Mexico and Canada, if Iran implemented crippling sanctions against this country, if Iran sponsored rogue terrorist groups here to overthrow our government, and with all of that, if Iran labeled this country as the biggest threat to world peace, how would you feel?